All right, everyone, welcome back to the Ramp Podcast. Today, I am joined with a special guest, somebody that came highly, highly recommended to us, Mr. Scott Giffis. Scott, how are you? I'm well, thanks. How are you? I am doing well. I'm doing well. Before we jump into those five questions that we ask all of our guests to get that apples to apples comparison, want to give you a chance to answer that all important question. Who is Scott Giffis? Well, first and foremost, I'm a dad of three. I have three daughters I'm very proud of. I would say I'm like an above average dad, below average husband, <laughs> a pretty well below average brother and son. But, you know, I, and then, and then in, in the sort of professional sense, I've been working in technology for better part of two decades, running companies and, and early in my career, different departments, and just really love, love building companies. I, I've over the last, I'd say for two thirds of my career has been sort of earlier stage companies, mid stage companies, hyper growth, and really love that sort of hair on fire sort of stage of, of companies growth. It's fun. You get to be really close to, to people earlier in their career that are trying to figure things out and you get to be play the role of a, of a coach and mentor there. And it's a, it's a part of me that I really enjoy. Yeah, it's great. Great rundown. And as a, a father of two, two young boys, I can tell you the uh, hair on fire startup thing. I don't even know why we do it to ourselves, but it's like, it's like we crave it or it's called to it. That's the only reason we do something as crazy as yeah, it's a, sickness, have a family plus, okay, yeah, pl plus go into it. It's just absolutely nuts. <laughs> but, but, uh, but yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate the context, obviously from previous conversations and, and conversations with folks close to me who know you, I think you, you shortchange a lot of it. You are one of the more impressive folks we ever had on this show. And uh, I can say I'm, I'm, I'm honored that you graced our presence and we're excited to learn from you. So when you're ready, I would love to jump into those five questions that we ask all our guests. I'm ready. Let's do it. And thank you. That's, that's very kind of you. I think I've seen other guests on your show. I don't, I don't think that's true, but I appreciate it all the same. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Well, we'll jump in either way. Question one, what is the best investment an early career salesperson can do for themselves and why? This is my own experience, but, and, and this is especially true, I think today more than ever, but investing in and really building up your, your acumen as a, as a business person first is really important when you're selling into organizations today. And the thing about sales is and if you if you're genuine about it because it has it has a lot of this negative connotation but if you're genuine about it you're really approaching it from the perspective of how can i help this customer right you're, you're reaching out because you have conviction you can be helpful for them but in order to really put the pieces together to help them put the pieces together and make a business case whether it's for themselves as a decision maker or to, to bring it into the organization you need to be able to connect the dots in a way that really really speaks to how the company works and so so developing that that sort of High level business acumen allows you to sort of really work backwards from, okay, this is that problem I can solve over here. This is how it ladders all the way up to the things that matter most in the boardroom. And so it's, it's something I always invested a lot of time in early in my career. I read a ton I and mean, you can always make up for experience by, by stealing it from others. And so you read a lot of good books, you pay attention, you're genuinely curious. I think, I think those are the things that more than anything else will really help you in your career, not just as a salesperson, but as you, as you progress, whether you want to stay in sales or, or do other things, it's, it's just important. Yeah. Great, great points there. A few things off of what you said. So I think there's that quote, that's something like great artists, copy, amazing life-changing artists, steal something like that. But I think that's, that's exactly, that's exactly right. And then the other thing is the business acumen part. A lot of times when you get into these early career sales roles, you're thinking like, I just got to do the job, right? I got to hit my number. I got to make the calls. My inputs have to be this. My outputs have to be this, or I'm, I'm, I'm out of getting fired. And really, when you take a step back, the reason that I think sales is changing so much today and why it's becoming a strategic oriented or focused role and something that's looked at differently than it was even 10 years ago, where it's like that, that image in your head of like smooth talking, Wolf of Wall Street type is it's because you really have to solve that business use case. It's not just about dial for dollars, bulldoze the prospect into buying. Like buyers are too smart now. So salespeople have to level up their game too. And it does start by understanding how functions in a business work together. And do you really have a use case for them? And if you don't, it's okay. You don't need to sell everything to everyone. You just need to sell 
what you have and the value you have as a salesperson at a specific company to the companies that are direct fits and you can add value. That's very, very good perspective. And, and it's a long game too. I mean, the world is big, but it's pretty small and people will respect you when you, when you sort of run your analysis and you say, you know what, actually, I think you're in great hands in the way that you are. And thanks for your time. The next time you're reaching out with a different company or a different sort of solution, and you really believe it's going to be relevant, they're going to take the call from you. And, and so, and, and you treat them well up front, it's going to, it's going to translate throughout the life experience of that customer as well. And that stuff matters. So yeah, no, it's a really good point. Yep. Great answer. Great answer. Question number two, how has your view on sales changed over your career? And why do you think that's happened? Well, I mean, I, you sort of hit the nail on the head when you were, you were talking a second ago in terms of your image of a salesperson. So I'll, I'll, I'll speak about this from two angles. The first is my own you know, personal experience as a salesperson early on. And, and then the second will be sort of broadly how I think about how sales as a channel and, and a sales as a profession has evolved over the last couple of, of years in particular. So when I began and to really date myself, when I began in sales, there wasn't, there weren't fancy systems like CRMs. I had an index box and in that index box was a bunch of cards and, the, and they, were, they were divided up into days of the week and then weeks and months. And that's where my, my, my contact list came from, right? And, and I wasn't actually particularly good at, I don't think I was great at, at sort of the, the sales piece. I was really good once somebody, if I could get you on the phone and I could get you or an email, and I could get you to respond and object. I was pretty good at that. Like that's where I could really kind of turn things around and, and get into a conversation. And again, I think a lot of that tends to connect to the, the business acumen side. And that's not just company level, but you were calling this out. Understanding people's individual roles, how they're, uh, how they're managed, how they think about their role inside the organization, like that sort of working, how they interact with all these people, that sort of stuff was always really helpful for me. But I remember one time I called someone who was a mentor for me and I, was, I said, I just don't think this is it for me. I, I think the sales thing is just not the thing. And, and I remember them saying, well, why, why do you feel that way? And I said, well, it's just, it just sucks. Like I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm just like trying to convince people all the time. And I'm, I'm just like, like trying to manipulate people all the time. And he said, well, that's, he said, that's your problem. He said, the manipulation piece is, 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 is in, a, is in the right angle, but he's, he, what do you, what do you want to do? I said, like, well, I want to be like you, you're this big time executive, right? You're doing all this stuff. He says, Scott, every day of my life I'm selling. He's like, I got to sell my board on, on what my vision is. I got to sell the team on what we're trying to accomplish. I got to sell the company. He's like, I sell every single day. And, and he said, the, the thing you got to remember is you got to start from the thing of like, what matters to them? Why, what, why are you here? What are you trying to achieve? What do you need them to be able to do? What are you guys going to do together? Right? And, and he just sort of like completely shifted my perspective. And, and I have to tell you that conversation, not only influenced how I sort of looked at, at the profession and my own role and my own responsibility when I was working with people, but also how I thought about hiring my teams as I, as I started moving up the, the sort of profile of the individual that I was always trying to recruit for and hire for. And, uh, and even as I scaled, and so it was really important lesson for me. And, and I really do subscribe to the idea that salespeople, the best, the good ones and, and, and the best ones in particular. They're great problem solvers. They're great at partnering with others inside of an organization, figuring it out and coming up with a solution. And, and, and like you said earlier, it's, it's not jamming it down their throat. It's finding out if this can really move the needle for them and then, and then showing them how and figuring out how to get it done and, 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 and saying no, when, when things aren't, aren't a good fit. So that, that, that was a, I think a, a big change. And, and then as you look at the world today, and there's so much that has changed and evolved, I think, I think the sales profession has become a lot more. I mean, especially given everything that's evolved with social media and, and all the other channels before sales was just a name attached to a company and the company was who you, who you engaged with. And yeah, the people do business with people and the relationships mattered and all of that was really important. And, and I don't think that actually has, has changed, but I think, I think who a salesperson in their, their persona has really elevated and their ability to create communities around what they do and, and to sort of, um, really be an ambassador of the brand, the story, 
have have a huge influence over over how companies think about their strategy and their roadmap. Again, the great ones, that's what they do. And they, and, and it's because they deeply understand their customer. They deeply understand the market that they're trying to go into. And it's, this is a slippery slope. It's not, hey, if you build me this feature, I can sell more of these deals, right? Give me this widget, I'll, I'll do these sales. That, that's not it. It's, hey, let me tell you what I'm seeing and hearing on the front lines because I'm actually building real, com I'm, I'm developing real relationships and having real conversations with our customers about the things that matter to them the most. And so, and then the other thing to your point, you know, I don't think, I think customers were, were smart before. I think they're smart today, but I think what's evolved is that they're educated in ways that they weren't educated. They have access to a lot more information, both, both directly and, and in communities and, and through networks. And it's just easier to get at information, right? The whole Thomas Friedman world is flat thing. And so when you look at that, you're, you're not coming to them with a, with just a pitch or a story, right? And it's not about your feature set. You really have to understand, okay, well, what are you trying to accomplish? What are the use cases you're trying to solve and, and develop that? And, and so you're, you're, you've got to be a good sales folks really have to, they have to understand their, their product pretty deeply, but they have to be able to break it down into those atomic units and understand, okay, well, what, what are the pieces of this? What are the use cases? What are the stories I can enable and, and bring that to life for customers? And so I just think it's, the game has been significantly elevated. I think there's a really unique opportunity for sales professionals to, to build a brand for themselves, a personal brand, and it's really important, and to build a community in, in markets that they serve. And then I think they've got to become experts about the space in which they live. They've got to be able to speak to speak. And, you know, and I think that stuff has changed, right? It, it's not just a couple of sales lines or a couple of sales tactics. Like, I don't think there's as many shortcuts as there as there once might have been, and maybe that was a kind of the point you were getting at. I think I think today you've really got to make the investment to again understand your customer, understand the industry that you play in, understand all the relationships and interconnectivity that exists, and and really speak from experience and stories about how your what you bring to the table has enriched the lives of the people that you serve. It's really really well thought out and. A lot of just great nuggets you just dropped on on us. The the thing that resonates the most is like the salesperson of today and some of the things that you mentioned on on what they need to know and what they need to learn. This is a strategic, this is strategic role. This isn't a like phone call jockey, somebody, this image that folks probably had in their head of what a salesperson used to look like. It is a very thought out, research driven, data driven, analytics driven role. And it's critically important that that person understands the, both the power they have, but also the responsibility they have as a steward of this business. Because if you hire folks for early career folks, if you're, if you're thinking about sales, marketing, customer service, customer success, otherwise, and you chose, you choose sales. It's really important that you understand that this is like a, this is a complex thing you're joining, complex org you're joining, and you really have to understand the sophistication that goes into a buying decision. And today, I mean, you're right. People have av so many avenues. You have YouTube that you can just look at YouTube and grab a product review of any product that's out there. If I want to look at Salesforce versus any other CRM in the world, I can literally Google Salesforce versus HubSpot. And there's a hundred videos that I can just look at myself that didn't exist five years ago or 10 years ago. So this buyer is educated. They're well-informed and you're right. You can't just dial down this big list of a hundred folks. For me, back at my first role was actually a group on, and we manually inputted individual leads into Salesforce, like one by one off of Yelp. And for you, it sounds like off a note card, right? Like just dialing through a note card that, that like, I can just get to more volume to make this work doesn't really exist anymore. The buyer just knows more and you have to adapt. Salespeople have to adapt and that's, that's strategic. The buyer knows more. The, it's harder to reach them, right? There's, there's so much technology that's automated. And frankly, automation is just like alcohol. I mean, if you're, if you're, if you're happy, maybe you'll be a little happy. If you're sad, alcohol is not going to fix your problem. If you've got, if you've got a fundamental problem in your outreach, doing it a thousand times a day isn't going to make it better. Right. And so, yeah, hundred percent. It's interesting.
Yeah, good, good discussion. Good discussion. I don't, I don't necessarily want to end that one, but we do have to move on to question number three, which is what is one mistake that you made early in your career that shapes the way you operate today? I have to pick just one. I mean, I, I made mistakes <laughs> yesterday, and she knew what, how, what I'm going to pick tomorrow. Well, I, I think if I, if I'm looking back, I had so, so I, I, I've had a lot of great mentors in my, in my career. I've been really lucky in that way. And but one of the, one of the early pieces of feedback I got was, was sort of in that, in the sort of softer skills. Like I, I look, I'm from Jersey, kind of tend to be pretty, pretty rough around the edges, pretty direct. And, and I'm inherently sort of a a type driver sort of personality, like indecision makes me crazy, right? Got to keep the ball going forward, that sort of thing. And I had a, a, a mentor who basically sat me down and he talked to me about the different sort of communication styles and, and personas and that sort of thing. And, and it, it was eye opening for me because it had never been something that I invested the time and energy into, but really being able to read and understand body language and understand it was harder today on Zoom, of course, but really try to pay attention to the other person. And I think I probably just sort of went in and like pulled the drawstring and just threw up on people early on. And, and I, I learned, and I wouldn't say I'm great at it, but I'd say I learned how to try to pay attention to the, the, the person I was talking to and, and adjust my communication styles, my, my creative style, the, the sort of language I use, just my, my overall approach in that way. And so I think that was, that was if I, I'm going to cheat here, I'm going to do two. That was one. And then the other thing is just be really careful about what you think you know. And I'll, I'll tell you a funny story. So this, I, I, I've been really lucky, I said, in my life to, to, to join companies and industries that were leaders in their space but not yet. And in, in a space that was evolving really quickly and there was just always tailwind. And so one of the companies that I joined early in my career was a company called Career Builder. And we, early in the Career Builder story, Career Builder was all about the sort of movement from, from print ads to digital and basically putting recruiting advertising. And then it got, it got a lot more elaborate over time with, with smart data and other sort of solutions that we, we brought to market. But in the beginning, it was really about you know, advertising online for, for key jobs. And I had some some early success and I got to do some neat things. And, and I you know, it was a great, great couple of years for me in my career. I, I had a lot of development. But one of the things that I was in charge of was the healthcare vertical at one point. And I, I'll never forget, I had this huge meeting. It was with a big like six hospital system or something like that. And they and this was around it was I mean, it's still nursing shortages and everything else and nothing but love for our frontline, our frontline workers and the whole bit. But I remember going into this chief nursing officer and this chief operating officer room, and I was so prepared to sort of highlight the fact that they had like 5,000 open nursing jobs across their, their big system. It was a huge healthcare system. And I was, I'd done all this research to show them how we can help them get through it. And, I'll, well, and I, was, I felt like I had this thing in the bag. It was going to be a huge, huge deal. And I walk in and I start telling them what their problem is. And, and they were sort of shockingly polite. And they let me go on this rant for about seven minutes. And then the, the, the chief nursing officer, she stops me and she's like, something like, what's your name again? What kind of thing? And, and she said, she said, if you were, if you had done your homework, you would know that last year we had triple that amount of open roles and that we did all these great initiatives and that we were, we were really proud of where we are and snot nosed kid, like, don't tell me what's what. And, and it would have been a simple question, right. That I could have asked. And, and it, it's like, it's just stupid little example, but it's one that I'll never forget because you can, no matter how much research you've done on the outside, no matter, no matter what, how prepared you think you are, you need to, you need to still go through the same steps of any human relationship, right? You need to like, get to introduce yourself. You need to get, build a little bit of rapport. You need to, you need to give them enough to help them feel like it's worth their time to give you enough, but you have to get some information. You have to get some things. And, and, and so just, it's, there's a lot of cliches out there and what happens when you assume and the whole bit, but it's really true and it's really important. And so no matter how much you think, you know, you, you've always got to be comfortable learning and you, you have to know that you, you're going to be able to learn from everybody around you all the time. And you, you always have to have that level of humility as you go into those things. So I don't know if those are good examples or bad ones, but those are two things I think of a lot. Yeah, those are, those are great. Those are great. I mean, I think a lot of folks, myself included, fall into that, that trap early in their careers too, of like, 
oh, I, I did this and this and this up to this point in my life. So I know this or like, it's maybe even not that you feel like some people probably don't. It's like, you think you have to know. So you're faking the persona of the expert when really the, the folks that I admire the absolute most in business or in life are the ones that are just so, so curious about whatever they're doing or even other things that they're not exceptional at today. Like give me 10 folks on a team or 10 folks that I work alongside. I would much prefer nine of the, the myself and nine others, the nine to just be intensely curious than all of them be super, super expert in like whatever their, their craft is. I just want somebody who's like going to figure it out. And that doesn't come from knowing all the time. It comes from being able to learn and grow and understand these new complex problems, whether it's a, a one sale opportunity or it's building a massive business or even learning, learning a new sport, right? Like how do you learn how to do something new, new, new hobby? It's, you just got to start as a beginner and like, accept that that's the brain you have today and that you can get there over time. 100%, Danny, like the, the, the sign of someone's intelligence isn't what they know, it's what they know to ask, right? And that sort of, that genuine curiosity is such a critical thing for, for humans in general, but, but especially in, in sort of the sales profession, right? And yeah, it's a really, it's an important point. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Next up, somewhat in line with that, but uh, who has had the greatest impact on your career? And if you could expand, that'd be great. This is this is a really tough one to to answer. I, as I said, I've I've been really lucky throughout my entire career. I've worked for for incredible people. I've had great mentors, coaches. So this is this is a tricky one. I so I mean my my dad played a big role early in my life, and and I my best friend's dad, who was sort of like dad number two for me, was a was a top guy at J and J for years, and I go to him for a lot of advice over the years. So they they. they really important people. But I guess I go back to my, my career builder days. I worked for this woman. And, and again, I, this is not the, like, I, again, I work for incredible people, but I worked for this, this woman, Beth Pernier. And she was like your classic, just like world-class sales leader. And she was, she was just a great sales person too, but she was such a great leader at her core. And a lot of the lessons that I keep today in terms of leadership, I, I, I take a lot from her. I think she 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 had a, an oversized impact on how I approach leadership. You know, it was it was never about her. She was she deeply not just believed and spoke to, but like like lived serving in leadership. Her team was always on a pedestal, and she was the first person there to protect when when things weren't going the way that they needed to go. And so in, in I had lots of leadership roles before, but I never really worked for someone who, who knew what it was like to build a leadership organization. And I, there's just tons of, of learnings. And there was, there was a number of folks actually in that organization that I, I learned from Mary Delaney was another one, but over the, and then, and then over the years, I've just had really great, great bosses and mentors who, who have since become great friends. So I, I've, I've been really blessed throughout my, throughout my career in that, in that department. That's really cool. It's really cool. I have kind of an offshoot of this question. The folks we bring on to the podcast, generally speaking, have very, very impressive track records and, and have worked at many spots, stops along the way with great leaders, great leadership teams. It's more for the early career professional. So sometimes folks just one put, I mean, generally speaking, put a lot of pressure on themselves to make this early career decision of like, where do I work? What do I do? But other times they put so much pressure on themselves that they forget that it's really about who you work with and who you end up reporting to if you do have a boss in your first role. For somebody who perhaps made a misstep and ends up working for somebody that they just can't jive with or that person is, is, is a poor leader, what do you do in that circumstance and how do you get out of that to align yourself with somebody that you had the opportunity to work with somebody who does follow the servant leadership principle or really is for their team or for their company. Like, how do you get out of that situation proactively and just jump into something new? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. It certainly has happened. I've certainly been in, in those situations and I, I'd say handled it in different ways. I, I think the first thing I'd, I'd, I'd want to check myself on going back to that sort of like humility and I think I know everything is you can learn from everyone. 
And, and that includes, you can learn what not to do. And so first and foremost, I would try to chalk it up to like, what can I, what can I learn? How, how can this make me grow? And I would try, I would try mindset is such an important thing in, in all of our lives that I would, I would spend time first making sure I'm looking at that. The second thing is so I'd really want to understand, okay, well, what is it that's making me upset? And, and if it is one of these situations where the boss is putting you behind and saying, look what a great job I'm doing, and they're, they're just not there for you and you're, they're not looking out for you, then I would question, okay, well, is that a cultural thing inside this organization? Right? Is that how this company rewards and celebrates? Or, or is that just an individual situation? And, and depending on the size and scale of the company, you might have an HR business partner, you might have somebody else, and you have to think about, are there people I can, I can learn from, grow from, trust, where I can still continue to develop and excel? I mean, the beautiful thing about sales is at the end of the day, you get to stand out on your own, right? It's a very numbers-driven business. You can, be, you, you can typically be successful. The part where it becomes non-negotiable for me is, is when it starts to infringe on my values or how I perceive myself, right? And, and look, it's not, somebody can be hard on me, critical on, about how I approach my work, et cetera. And to some extent that that's going to be okay. But if they really start to make you feel bad about yourself, they really, or you feel like values aren't aligned. Look, I, if you're not, if you're part of a, a culture or, or come from a background that doesn't look like me, like some white dude sitting in a group, you know, and there's, there's plenty of that. You, you've got to really pay attention to those things. And so if you start to sense that like, there's a, there's a values thing or a cultural thing, you need to start to look around. But w what I tell oh. folks a lot when they're thinking about making moves in their career is don't, don't run away from something, run to something, right? Find something that you're really excited about. Find something that you're passionate about and go do that thing. And also don't assume that just because this one jackass is like making your life miserable, that, that that's what sales is like. Because I know some, some amazing sales leaders and sales cultures that are really rewarding, wonderful places to, to operate. So I would just think about all of those things and, 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 then, and then like pr to be practical and tactical, you know, reach out to friends, pay attention. There, there's lots of new, just like your, you, the customers you're selling into are getting smarter and smarter. Now they're getting more and more educated. There's a lot of information out there about where great cultures live and, and how you can be successful and, and lousy cultures and, and where you, what you should avoid. And so take advantage of those communities and really lean into them. Join these sort of sales communities and, and that you can be part of. Build relationships. Again, going back to like build your brand, build your network, build, build your own community. Those types of things will really help you as you, as you steer, steer in your career. It's a great advice. Really, really good advice. And a good framework to kind of think through as an early career person. And a lot of, I think what's happened at least over the, the last like two and a half years and everybody's gone virtual remote is I've seen a trend or maybe it's just the news headlines, but of folks just like void of companies seemingly void of that, that, that empathy or even that like, go get it, go get it done this. Like this virtual world has left us without that communication, that connection between each other, between our boss, between you and the company. So it's really important. I think that the highlight of that is Find, find your tribe, find your community, reach out to these networks that can be that source of mentorship or that source of goodwill to you in your career. And then it really assess, like if it is the environment, if it is the way that they promote, the way they celebrate people, yeah, it, it might be time to, to get out and, and that's okay. Like that, that, that's going to be fine. And you're going to be fine as an early career professional too, but, but really, really so. But also, also be careful. I mean, it's very easy to get what I, what I tell folks is like, be greedy, don't be envious, right? Know what you deserve and what you should, what you should have, and you should go and get that. But, but be careful about watching what everybody else is getting and feeling like you're, you're not getting what, what you deserve. Like that, it's a, it's a dangerous slope because, and there's lots of data out there, companies promising this OTE, you know, people are always just like, social media has made this so, so bad. Everybody touts all the good and, and, and you don't see all the, all the shit that's happening behind them kind of a deal. Yeah. And so it's, yeah, just be really careful about what you're seeing elsewhere and focus on what do you want? What do you need? What do you, what do you deserve? And then there, there's a, it's tricky. I mean, go get what, what you are capable of getting. But I think oftentimes we, 
we may feel like we're ready for the next step before others see it or, or those types of things. And I don't want to tell anybody to hold back or, or not, not pursue what's, what's owed to them, but also make sure you're, you're keeping like honest, intellectually honest inventory of, of where you are in your development. Yeah, that's, that's really good. Really, really good. Need like a, a gut check. Somebody's just gonna like check you every once in a while too as an early guy. At least at least I did. I needed somebody to just feel like, look, you don't know what you don't know. Danny calmed down at the uh, early career. I'm just like, I need to do this and you do this. Yeah, but it, it's it's and it's one thing if that boss is doing this and putting their hand on your head, right? It's another thing if they say, Hey, you don't know what you don't know, and then they're helping pick you up and they're they're spending the time and investing with you the time to to help you grow. And it's an important distinction, right? Because the both are important. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Very good lens to put on that as well. So we deviated a little bit, but the last question is one that we've asked of every single guest, all three seasons of the Ramp podcast. It's if you could go back in time now that you have the benefit of hindsight, what is one piece of advice that you would give yourself as you are entering into your career and why? And it can't be buy Apple stock, right? <laughs> Good or 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 in 2010, make sure to throw every single dollar you have into Bitcoin. One of those two, that's fine too. <laughs> I would have met, yeah, maybe, maybe smarter. See, that's the difference between you and I. Dan. You're, you're you're gonna be, you're gonna go a lot further in life, man. Like I said, I made so many so many mistakes. As I should write a book about the mistakes that I made. But I think yeah, I've been I've been lucky to always be pretty growth oriented and growth growth minded, and and so. I, I've been good about like seizing every opportunity to learn. I wish I seized more opportunities to celebrate. I think I was, you get so caught up in get better, get better, get better. And I, and I, I think I do this even still as a leader, I have to constantly remind myself to take pause and celebrate with the team about the progress we've made, the things we've overcome and it, and it's not always in the metrics. And I think that's probably the piece of advice that I would just you know, as, as you, as you set out to, to grow, uh, celebrate the progress you make, and also be thoughtful about the metrics by which you measure your success. It, it may not be quota attainment or the check that you bring home or something you know, in that, in that vein, there might be something earlier in your, in your growth uh, that, that shows up that you need to take stock of. Right. And, and so I, I, I probably figure you know, I was a little too hard on myself. I think might still be too hard on everybody else. And no, just, just really pay attention to the, to the growth that you're, you're having and, and don't be afraid to stop and enjoy that along the way. I would, I would turn my camera around, but I don't want to show the, the background of my room quite yet, but I have it pasted on my, my big screen right here. Enjoy the journey. Cause that is some advice that I need to remind myself all the time of like, just just enjoy the little wins on the way to the big win, whatever that is for you. But, but yeah, just exceptional advice. And I, I honestly, like, I need to hear that all the time. It's just, you get so caught we all up suck like, at it. it. It's amazing yeah. how bad we Why? can be at this. I mean, you know, you know I, like be as kind to yourself as, as you would to the person you love the most. Right. Right. Uh, and it, it doesn't mean you don't hold yourself accountable, challenge yourself, strive for more, be, be great. But you know, along the way that, and then, and I've always been proud of like, try to always carve out time to, to do good things, right. To, to do, to, to give back. And as I look back, there's always time for a little more. So it's great. Really, really great advice. Really great advice and a perfect place to end. Scott, incredible, incredible conversation. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your wisdom and your guidance and really just the learnings that you've had over your career. I know our audience is really going to appreciate it. I appreciate it. It's even confirming in the end, like got to enjoy the journey too. But before we let you hop off, where can folks find you? Where can folks reach you? Yeah. I mean, I, you can certainly find me on, on LinkedIn and, and reach out, connect, love to make time there. Try to block out time to just meet people a couple of times a month just to create slots. And I know it's far when I'm supposed to plug stuff. I think, look, I, I just would, would hope everybody gets something out of it and and love the show. I hope people keep watching or you know watching, listening to the to the podcast here, Danny. Like I said to you in the in the earlier conversation, you, I was very intimidated when you sent me some of the other people that have been on this show and the, <laughs> and the lessons that they learned. I, I took a lot out of it, so I hope people keep listening and and learning a lot because it's a great program you're running here. 
Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. I'm sure, I'm sure they will. And we hope to have you back someday soon, Scott, on the Ramp Podcast. Thank you so, so much. That'd be great. Thanks so much, Danny. Appreciate it. All right. Talk soon.